Hi, welcome to another mega meal marathon. Woo woo! <laughs> I'm Charlo from Freezer Meals 101. And I'm Christy. Today we are planning a mega session. You have been asking for it. It's been a while since we've done one and it's time. So we are going to go ahead and make I don't know, how many recipes do we actually have? Did we count? Uh, we're gonna end up with well over a hundred meals, which is not unusual for our mega sessions. No. Because we do um, three months at a time, but this one is a little bit different in a few ways. And I'm kind of excited because we always want to show you that freezer meals are accessible to everyone and that this is something that can really help you in your life. But we also wanna show you that you know, you, you do this the way that it works for you. And mega sessions don't work for everybody, so certainly that's not what we're saying. We're not saying you need to do these, you know, m marathons that mm -hmm. are days and like it is two a, days. It is a marathon, yeah. and it's two days of assembly, never mind the prep time that we've taken to do. So yeah. it's a lot of work. But one of the things is whether you do just doubling your recipes and ending up with a week's worth of meals or do like one week on a Saturday afternoon and end up with meals for the week mm -hmm. or if you do a month at a time or if you do three months at a time or however you do it, we want you to know that you do it the way that it works best for you. And one of the ways that we're doing that today is like this time we're not just making main courses. We are also doing a dessert, which we've never done before. Oh, yes, we are. And we're doing some side dishes, mm -hmm. including um, side dishes that we're gonna be using in our Christmas dinner. Yes. Uh, because Christmas is coming up, and we're doing our Christmas breakfast foods. Yes, yeah, that's right. It's gonna be, Christmas is gonna be a breeze this year because we're doing the work now when it's not so hectic. And I'm just also really looking forward to, one of my favorite things about freezer meals is doing it with a friend. Because, yes. I mean, we work together, we see each other all the time, but we really will get a chance to talk. During, We're gonna do so much visiting. So much visiting up. over the next two days. And I love that. And we play music and we dance and maybe you'll get some dancing <laughs> in there. And, it's you know, fun. all the little celebrations and then our kids get home from school and then they're part of it and it's kind of an event. It's and become an event. Yes. And the whole family like knows what it mm -hmm. means when mom's doing freezer meals this week. And my mom is actually coming to help us do dishes. Oh, oh. bless her heart. And she's it's... wonderful. She's such a lovely lady and it is super helpful to have the dishes. And she is the Energizer Bunny. She is like... 72 years old and I she just never slowed down never but she takes good care of herself yes and um and she has she a great attitude mountains. yes she does <laughs> but beyond beyond yes. her taking care of herself physically she has a great attitude she's always cheerful she's always peppy and ex so kind she's we love charlotte's mom yes. Mary Lynn, we love you she is such a positive person and yeah always knows how to help herself feel better and yeah. help those around her feel better and she's awesome okay we're going off on a tangent there, i'm gonna but... go off on a little one though i went to a concert last night with my daughter and it was a punk rock show and my knees are sore today because there was a lot of jumping <laughs> it was so good it was so good four rows back with charlotte's daughter and so we're like hey how's it going and um, can you imagine in a stadium of 15,000 people what are the odds that she was four rows behind us and like literally behind us it was too funny um but oh my goodness what a good show we had a great time so i got in late and i'm tired today and my knees are sore and i'm thinking <laughs> i didn't think i don't think i felt like this when i was 20 jumping around yeah. But it was so good and I'm still energized from that. Like I'm going to be like hopping today because I will think about the concert. It Hopefully that's going to help like see you through. Oh, today. talk to me at two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we really feel. I might okay. have to like dip into the Advil by then. <laughs> we'll see. We're going to put a link right there to a video that we made by popular demand. Oh, yes of how we did the prep for today. Because you guys ask, like- Show us your prep. Yeah. 
Show us how you get ready for one of yes. these marathons. Now, you often ask for a shop with us and we don't take our cameras inside the store. Sometimes we'll take pictures of prices and send them to each other because we're doing our shopping, but generally we don't film inside the stores. The store that I go to doesn't allow it. Actually, two of the stores that I go to don't allow it, so that's one reason. Um, and another reason is it's, it's just hectic. It's and hectic and I, we have a list this long and, and it's like, let's just get through it. So we did take pictures of our trunk. We took <laughs> pictures of our trunk. <laughs> Of, of the, the trunk of our cars, of what we came home with, and one by one, you're gonna see every little piece that we got there, and uh, it's a little crazy. And so in that video of prepping, you'll see everything from like choosing the recipes to you know making your shopping list like all all of the every stage along the way mm -hmm. but one thing I just wanted to touch on with that is choose when you're choosing your recipes one thing that we do is we think about what's coming up and that's again how you can customize your sessions for what works for your family what works for you right if you take lunches to work then maybe you want to make individual size freezer meals and be taking those with you to save money and to eat healthier on your lunches. If you've got like Christmas coming yeah, up, Christmas coming then up. you think about, okay, Christmas breakfast, Christmas Eve, we've been making appetizers for the freezer. Yes, we have. Check out on, on the channel, you will find uh, videos coming up these next few weeks. There's at least three of them. Yes. of um, holiday appetizers that you can freeze and pull out for like New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then like Christmas dinner, um, we did a video of Thanksgiving side dishes. We entirely made our oh, Thanksgiving. Oh yes, we did. Weeks ahead. Except for the turkey. Yes. And so this time I thought about in two months, our family's going on a ski trip. And so I purposely added chili to the list because we have to have that. And, and it can be in the soup. slow cooker mm -hmm. while you're out skiing, and then you come back and it's ready to go for you. And the tortellini soup is also slow cooker, and yes. so it's just, you know, you get back in and you're like, you're cold and you want something that's like hard. Can I tell you a heartwarming ski story? Yes, of course. My friend grew up in a, um, she was a bio kid in a foster home, so they always had sometimes they had three kids, sometimes they had eight kids. It was a busy foster home. And they had a motor home that they would take, they would gather everybody up and they would take everybody skiing. They would leave it, you know, for, they would maybe sometimes even sleep the night before so that they could leave at five in the morning and the dad would drive them and they would park in the parking lot and they would go skiing. And at lunchtime or at the end of the day, he would have a lasagna in the oven. Mm. So when they got off the ski hill, it was, it was in there and they could eat and then they would go home. Years and years later, when my friend was an adult talking about those awesome ski trips with her dad, he always said, you know, skiing was expensive as, enough as it was. I always felt so guilty that I, I couldn't afford for you guys to go eat at the chalet. Mm. And she said, no, dad. I remember it so fondly because I got to sit in my motorhome with my family eating hot lasagna while those guys were sitting in their little car beside the, us freezing, <laughs> eating their cold sandwiches. No, 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 she said, you did it right. So think about those kinds of things when you're putting your freezer meals together. It can really be a beautiful thing. No one? I know, it's such <laughs> yeah, a- you're emotional. I wasn't even there and it was like a nice memory. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> oh. We're gonna anyway. have to just take a minute. Yeah, that out. <laughs> um, and now we're back, and you'll notice that I'm one of those people that can cry for 30 seconds, and I look like I've been bawling for three hours. So enjoy this for the rest. <laughs> but I have some good news for you. That particular lasagna, my friend's mom taught me how to make it, and it's in our club. It's called Cece's Amazing Lasagna, and it is. It's very good lasagna. It's huge. I mean, you better pe be prepared to like feed an army when you make this <laughs> lasagna, or you can split it up into a couple of pans, but it's so good. And then anytime you eat it, you can think of my friend having it in her motorhome on the ski hill in, uh, in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta. Aww. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna get started and we will check in with you throughout the day and update you on our progress. 
We've also had people ask if we can show kind of the behind, like all the busyness that happens in the kitchen. So we've got- We got some B-roll for you. We got B-roll that's recording <laughs> our scurrying around. Yes. And so you'll see that it is not as perfect as it looks in just the overheads of you Yeah, know. that's right. It is a little messy and you'll get to see some behind the scenes because you're going to see us using our cameras and our ring lights. And let me tell you, we are not a fancy operation here. <laughs> no, we've got like our phones and these Amazon ring light tripod things. Because and... we care about freezer meals and this is how we bring them to you. Yeah, so... Join us, we are so glad you're here, and we just want to empower you to know that you can do this too, to take the stress out of cooking, to take the biggest thing is to not have to wonder and worry about what am I going to make today, that's the, that's the peace that's of mind. That's the peace of mind, it really is, um, that's the and best part. And of course it saves you a lot of money and a lot of time, so we want to bring that to you. Hopefully this will help you to see that you can fit this into your life. We are cheering you on to do this for yourselves. Let's get started. All right. <laughs> you are going to love the meatloaf with barbecue sauce. I have been making this for years and I think it'll fit right in with you too. Start out with two pounds of ground beef, throw in half a cup of bread crumbs and graham wafer crumbs, some evaporated milk, a quarter cup of minced onion, two beaten eggs, salt, pepper, and some onion soup mix. Mix that all together and then add it to a freezer meal bag. You'll want to remove all of the air and seal it up and lay it flat. To make the barbecue sauce, in a bowl you will mix some ketchup, brown sugar, dry mustard, chili sauce, and that's it. You mix it up and you put it in a medium freezer meal bag remove all the air, and then you staple the two bags together. Make sure you staple it above the seal, lay them flat to freeze. To cook these, you wanna thaw them out, put them in an eight by eight container or a smaller casserole, and then right before you cook it, you can put the barbecue sauce right on top and bake it with the barbecue sauce on. It'll be about an hour in a 350 oven. Enjoy. For the ham and potato casserole, we're just making one because I had some leftover ham and it's enough to just make one of these and that'll be a great way to not waste the ham. This is a wonderful recipe for getting rid of any leftover holiday ham that you have. So really, really like this one. You're gonna do four cups of frozen hash browns one and a half cups of ham that's cubed. This time I've got about two cups, so I'm just gonna add all of it. Half a cup of chopped onion, one cup of cheddar cheese that's shredded, some cream of chicken soup, half a cup of sour cream, salt and pepper. You can find this recipe in the description below. On the day that you go to cook this, bake it in the oven and my kids like to add ketchup on top of here or you can add hot sauce. You can also change this up by topping it with some breading or um, adding a different type of cheese. Recently Christy and I did a video of some homemade mixes like seasoning mixes that can serve as a recipe starter and one of the ones we made was shake and bake. So today we're gonna to try some of our homemade shake and bake with some chicken drumsticks. Christy will be doing that one and with some chicken breasts and I'm gonna do that one. When we were doing that video, I will put the link up above for that. We were talking about how to do shake and bake, you have to coat your chicken with water or oil or something and make it wet and we were talking about different ways to do that and I thought that using a spray bottle would be less gross than soaking your chicken or like dipping it in something. So I'm not sure how Christy's gonna do hers but I'm going to spray the chicken with some water in a spray bottle and then we're gonna add one cup of our homemade shake and bake mix and of course, shake it up. Don't you remember when you were a kid and you got to 
shake the shake and bake and it was so much fun. Well, let your kids help with this step. Um, let them know that cooking can be fun and helping in the kitchen can be fun. And when they're older, that help will be very appreciated. One of my daughters has been helping for days with our prep and the grocery shopping and all of that, and I so appreciate it. Whereas when she helped when she was younger, it was more hindrance than help, but if you put that time in then and let them help at that time when they're older, it pays off so much. Anyway, you're gonna shake that up, get all of the air out of the bag and freeze it. On the day that you go to bake this, if you've got bones in your chicken, like with the drumsticks, then you would thaw it and bake it at 400 degrees. If it's boneless, then you would um, bake it, oh, either way it's at 400. But if it's got bone in, you're gonna bake it for 45 minutes. If it's boneless, 20 to 25 minutes, that's it. making some Brussels sprouts that we can use as a holiday side or you can use them as you know whatever kind of side dish it's nice to have side dishes in the freezer because then if you've got something like a marinated chicken then you can take out your sides and have a more complete meal and you don't have to run to the store or you know think about what you're gonna make so we like to have side dishes in the freezer. We just don't usually include them in our mega meal sessions. We usually make them in separate sessions. So you're gonna put some Brussels sprouts in your freezer bags, uh, about one pound. We are using frozen, but you could use fresh or frozen. If you want to, you can cut them in half. I'm just using, I'm just keeping them whole. We're gonna put some garlic, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Super simple. And then when you go to bake these, you just spread them out on a baking sheet and cook them 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. When they are cooked, you're gonna sprinkle them with some more Parmesan and serve. Buffalo ranch broccoli and sometimes cauliflower. But today we just have broccoli. Normally it would be three and a half cups of cauliflower and three and a half cups of broccoli already frozen or you can use fresh but because we don't have cauliflower today and we're just doing, using broccoli, I'm gonna use seven cups. We're going to add two to three tablespoons of Frank's Red Hot, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and three tablespoons of dry ranch dressing mix. We have ours loose from Bulk Barn, but you can also buy it in a packet, and it would be one packet. We're gonna mix these together, and then when you go to cook them, you can cook them right from frozen. Put them on a cookie sheet, cook them at 425 for 30 minutes, and you wanna stir them or flip them about halfway through. And you just wanna make sure that they're tender crisp and maybe a little bit charred before you take them out. 
This is one of our family favorites. It's called Marry Me Chicken. It is my son's absolute favorite chicken recipe. He will request it by name. It goes together really easily and it cooks up really beautifully. It's got sun-dried tomatoes in it, which just give it a little extra kick and layer of flavor. We start it with our chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're going to add three cloves of minced garlic, a teaspoon of thyme, some red pepper flakes, some basil, some salt and pepper, and then the good stuff, chicken broth, heavy cream, the sun-dried tomatoes, and we're gonna put some Parmesan cheese that's grated on the side so that when the day comes of cooking, we can add it in. My favorite way to cook this is on a skillet. You could probably do it in the oven, but it looks so good in the skillet because it crisps up and it cooks off the extra moisture and it is delicious. Just right over medium high heat for 24, 27 minutes. You wanna maybe check it with a thermometer. You can garnish it with some extra fresh basil if you have it and your more of your shredded Parmesan cheese. We are making a whole bunch of hash brown casseroles today because they're always nice to have on hand for a brunch or whatever. But this time, Christy and I are both gonna use one for our Christmas morning breakfast and that will make things easy. And then it's just nice to have some others for whatever you want them. Sometimes we add some ground Italian sausage to these. And when we do that, we do add a can of evaporated milk to make it a little creamier. But today we're just doing the veggie version of this. So we've melted some butter. We're gonna add uh, mixed butter and cream of mushroom soup together in a very large bowl. We've tried to do this right in the bag, but it just doesn't mix very well. With the frozen hash browns kind of make the melted butter like congeal and it's just not a good situation. So we've found that it's better if you mix the sauce together in a bowl first. So you're gonna mix that together, add some chopped onion, cheddar cheese, pepper, and then you're gonna add in an entire bag of frozen hash browns. Now, while raw potatoes don't freeze and thaw well, potatoes that are already frozen or cooked do. And so you can go ahead and use frozen hash browns or frozen tater tots or that kind of thing when you're doing freezer meals. We're gonna get that all mixed together, transfer it into our freezer bag and freeze. Then we're going on the day that we go to cook this, we can cook it in the oven or the slow cooker. I don't often do this in the slow cooker, but I do really appreciate having that option for those days when you're having a large brunch with a lot of people and you need your oven for other things like your wife saver or your frittata or your bacon or those kind of things because then you're not using up oven space for this. Enjoy!
So it is kind of midday on day one <laughs> and we wanted to take a break and give you some freezer meal tips that can be super helpful yes. when you're doing this kind of thing. Um, so number one, have a little measuring cup or something in your cheese and in your onions. Later on when we do the ground beef, we'll have one in there. A cup of, this is one cup, so one cup of cheese. We can just scoop it up. And can I point out how nice and loose this cheese is? It's because I put cornstarch in it when I shredded it. You might look at shredded cheese that you buy in a bag at a store and say, oh, it's got all that stuff in it. Do you know what it is? It's potato starch and it keeps it loose from, keeps it from clumping. So I just wanted you to know that there is a little trick there. It is, it's worth it. It makes it very nice and loose. And you can see it's all been absorbed. You can't see it and it doesn't affect the taste. It doesn't affect the, the quality of your meal. So again, with the, um, you know, your cup in the onions, I just want to point out because we don't have a ground beef ready yet and I'm going to get to that in a second or we don't have it out yet. But I'll we'll tell um, you why in a minute. Yes. So the ground beef one, it is two and is it one third or two, two and one third? Two and one third cups makes one pound. So when you're sitting there with your recipe and it says to add one pound of ground beef into your bag, when you've got the cup in there, it's super easy. You just scoop two and a thirds of these into your bag and you've got one pound. So and we're approximating here. Yeah. And, but when you only have X amount of pounds of ground beef, you do kind of need to make it fit the meal. You want it to match the sauce. You want it to be able to stretch through all the meals you have planned. So we do actually measure it out. We do. And so in our minced garlic, which this is a time saver too, mm -hmm. we're using so much garlic over the next two days. Yes. So we might even use more than one of these jars. It's shocking, but you know, it's we really do. meals. And I, you'll see in the Mary Me Chicken video, I, it, it said three cloves. I kind of measure garlic with my heart a little <laughs> bit. And Charlotte <laughs> said, that's, that's a lot of garlic in there. And I'm like, it's three cloves. Yes, it's a lot of garlic in there. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. But, you know, you just keep the spoon in here all day. And then like here in our Parmesan, we've got a quarter cup measure because it tends to be, for our Parmesan, it tends to be like quarter a quarter cup, cup or half, half cup. You know, we can, we can do math. We can and, math. Yeah, so that <laughs> makes it easy. So another thing is like I was saying that we don't have our ground beef out and that's because it's faster if you do like proteins at the same time. So today mm -hmm. we're working on chicken, chicken, chicken and things that are frozen. So I just finished doing um, hash brown casserole because I wanted to get those hash browns out of my freezer to make room for the meals. And we've also done like the frozen Brussels sprouts, frozen broccoli. Um, broccoli. Anything that was in the freezer and frozen, we want to make room in the freezer for all these meals. Yes. So we tend to start with the frozen things. Yes. Yeah. And yes, putting your like proteins together really does make it faster, partly because you don't have to, you know, put it away in the fridge and take it out every time. You can just, I mean, you're going to go through it. You just let it sit there on the counter and bam, 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 you get through it. The other thing is when we first started doing freezer meals, we were all over the place. We didn't have a plan of, of you know, I'm going to do the ground beef and then, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of chicken and then we do a little bit, we do the salmon and then some shrimp. It was about what we felt like It's doing. what we felt like we doing. Got bored. <laughs> but once things would happen, like I would, I would buy the chicken and leave it in my fridge at home. So I wouldn't even bring it till the second day and we were getting faster and faster and it kind of clicked one day of, wait a minute, we are doing all our proteins at the same time. It's making it faster. It is making it faster. So all these little tips will make it faster. This is a marathon. You have to pace yourself and this is how you do it. Yes. And the other thing that made it faster, the can opener. Oh, Electric yes. can opener. Electric can opener, another tip of ours. We haven't used it much today. I, a little I, bit. Five cans of mushroom soup is. But all some I've days opened. we have really heavy can opener days, and and yeah, it saves our wrists and it does save some time. Uh, when Christy was saying that she's got her chicken at home in her fridge, just in case this is your first time watching us, oh. we're neighbors. Yes. Christy lives two doors that way, and so one of the things we do on these big mega meal days is that Christy leaves a cooler on my front step. 
and we take her meals over to the cooler and when the cooler is full, she brings it home, puts it in her freezer and comes back. Now, not all of you are fortunate enough to have a friend that lives so close by, I know. Yeah. But you start door knocking and you go find a neighbor that'll do this with you. <laughs> and you can be like me and Charlotte. <laughs> or if it's somebody that lives further away, then what we've done in the past is you take a laundry basket, um, and you know, that's for the end of the day. And what you'll have to do is stack in that person's freezer. Or if you live in Canada, like we do, then in the winter, it doesn't matter. You, you put, can it put it outside in boxes, laundry baskets, or of course a cooler. Make sure your cat yeah. can't get at it. That's why I started yes. with the cooler because the cats can't get it. I've got cats. She's got a cat. So yeah. And, and yes, doing it in the winter definitely helps. Something you need to know about freezer meals that we try to say when we are doing our description of the recipe is you have to make sure you get as much air as possible out of the bag. You can squish it. We have different techniques. We, we yeah. have developed different techniques that work for us. on the overhead videos which one of us is doing it based on how we get the air out of the bag. Actually. Yes, it's true. She squishes hers all up in and gets it down and, and, and gets that little corner. And I lay mine flat, squish it this way, and then I open up a section. And I then I fold get it, it and I fold it over. It is so funny. We have developed our own things. People give us tips like keep your sink full and you can put it in and that water will squish it out. That's a little cumbersome for us because we're doing so many. We're doing so many, and our dishwasher, Charlotte's mother, came here to wash dishes for us. We love her. She wouldn't be able to wash dishes. So there's, and some people stick a straw in it and suck it out. I don't want to do that with the chicken. No, it's got yeah, bacteria and, and some, some of the meals are going to go to her. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to do that one. But if you want to do that one at home, fill your boots. But you had the air in the bag is what causes your freezer burn. And that is how you're gonna get your frost and stuff, but the freezer burn especially. So you wanna use up your meals between three to six months, make sure you put a date on them, but get that air out of your freezer bag. That's gonna be the trick to keeping them fresher longer. One thing that is gonna save your time is if you get all of your ingredients ready for that recipe and mm -hmm. get them all down and in front of you, get your little section, and then you're not running around looking for things halfway through the recipe. Now, do them, due to the magic of editing, to you, it looks like we have it all there together, but Charlotte does the editing. She sees for real how long that I am looking for something in the fridge because I was not prepared. Yeah. So really, it does make a difference. Get it out here, bam, that meal goes together so fast. Yeah, walk around with your recipe in your kitchen and mm -hmm. gather all the ingredients and put it there with your bags and your labels and everything. And that brings us to the next thing that saves a ton of time, which is the Freezer Meals 101 Club. Yes, ma'am. And we now have printable labels Ooh. in the club. So the Freezer Meals 101 Club, what it is, if you don't know, is it is our membership that allows you to use our tried and true recipes. We do not put recipes in there that are not amazing. Absolutely. When we try them. And we come across some duds. Yeah. We do. And then we don't put we them in there. We sacrifice our taste buds <laughs> for you. And I don't know if you know this, I say this all the time, so you probably, maybe some of you know, Charlotte's a foodie and she is very critical of what is good food and what is not. True. I am too, but I'm not a foodie. I just like things or I don't like them. You know if something actually tastes good and it does, it does. And it does not go in the club unless it is Charlotte approved. Trust me. So yes. it's good food in there. We're actually still on the hunt for certain recipes. Like we want to fill you know, we want more pork chop recipes, but we're having a really hard time finding a really, really great one. We're we're looking for certain recipes and we're trying them in, we call this our test kitchen. We're trying them out and the ones that don't make the cut don't make it in there. Anyway, you have access to our tried and true recipes and all we do, them. yeah, just it so is, you know. it's over 200. You just click the ones you want, add them to a meal plan, then you choose how many of each you want to make, or if you're single, living alone, and you want to make half the meal or a quarter of the you meal, can scale it down. Scale it down. Mm -hmm. And then you click a button and it prints you off a shopping list. You can even edit the shopping list mm -hmm. so that you oh, take I already off have what cayenne you pepper. Have. I already have boatloads of lemon juice. I yep. don't know. And you can add things to your shopping list. Oh, I need toilet paper. Yes, <laughs> add it to your shopping list. and then, Totally editable. 
Yep. And then you can print labels that have the cooking instructions for your meals. So then you can slap the labels on there. It makes it really easy to gift the meals. Yeah, it does. And we might be going away on a little work holiday, leaving our families to fend for themselves. So the good news is they have a freezer full that has the cooking instructions right on it. My husband and children will not get scurvy while I'm gone for a week. <laughs> They'll be great. It's They'll be true. great. They are not going to eat a lot of vegetables. Let's be real. But if they're already in the meal, yes, they will. Yep, it's right there. And it's if right you've there. got teens, they can come home from school and follow the instructions and make the meals. So the Fridge Meals 101 Club does save you a ton of time. It makes things so much faster because it takes the brain workout. You don't have to do it. It really math. does. These recipes, they're available on the Freezer Meals 101 website. It's the system that is ma what makes the club special. Oh my goodness, the system. And we do have some recipes that are only available there's a, in the club. There's a few, <laughs> there's a few benefits yes. to being a member. But we also have a prep video that we've talked about. Charlotte goes through the headache of what it takes to make all of those lists. And we take that away from you. You can just do it at a click of a button and that's really the benefit. So those are some tips for making freezer meals easier, faster, and it's some of the things we've learned through the years. I'm sure we're going to think of others as we go along in the next day and a half. We'll break in and tell you. Yep. And um, we're going to do a lunch break now because one of the things we've also learned is that we need to make sure we drink lots of water. and. I have tea for caffeine and Christy has coffee for caffeine and shoes. We wear shoes in the kitchen because we're on our feet all day. Our backs get sore, our hips get sore, our feet get sore. And I was at a concert last night. My knees are sore. <laughs> and those are things we learned the hard way. Yeah. Like the shoes and the eating. And the eating. Sometimes we set up a snack station. Today we are having uh, manicotti. Yep. Which is a freezer meal that we had from last time we did freezer meals. And, and it's in the club. And we're it's having so good. it today. So enjoy um, it. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Lemon mustard chicken is definitely in my top 10. I love this recipe. We start out with our chicken breasts or boneless, skinless chicken thighs. In this case, we have thighs today. I spent a bit of extra time in my prep and I prepped all of our chicken thighs, which saves a ton of time on assembly day. To each bag, I'm going to add half a cup of honey, which is melty, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, some lemon juice, lemon pepper, Italian seasoning, cayenne pepper, and that's it. I'm going to squish it around, remove all the air, and I'm going to seal it up and freeze it. This is a great one for putting in the oven. You can put it in your slow cooker. You can cook it in a skillet on your stovetop, and you can barbecue it. Really great chicken, really versatile, and it's kind of a favorite in our family. This lemon pepper chicken is so easy. It has very few ingredients, but it is just delicious. It is one of Christie's absolute favorite recipes, and it's my daughter, Gracelyn's, favorite chicken. I've got the chicken already in the bags because Christy kindly went ahead and prepped those for me. But we've got our 8 to 10 boneless chicken thighs in here. You can also use 3 to 5 chicken breasts. You're going to add lemon juice, minced garlic, lemon pepper, and cayenne pepper, and that is it. This is a magic recipe because it's so simple, just five ingredients and it's done. Uh, we're gonna, of course, take out all of the excess air, squish it around to combine the ingredients. On the day that you go to make this, you can make it either in the oven, in the skillet on the stove top, or on your barbecue. So it's very versatile and super easy. You can find the recipe in the description below. This Moroccan style chicken is a new one for us. Sharla and I had made some appetizers that included dates for the freezer. Uh, they were bacon wrapped dates and they're in another video. And you will see that there was some leftover dates. So she found Moroccan style chicken and kind of adapted a recipe for that using up the rest of the dates because we hate waste. We want to save money. We want to save you money. So you can do this too. We start it with our chicken thighs. 
We'll add sliced onion, some salt and pepper, minced ginger. We like the squeezy tube kind because it's fresh, it tastes a little better, and we just like it. We could get to say squeezy tube. We're gonna add in some cumin, coriander, red pepper flakes, cinnamon, and basil. We will add in some pitted olives that have been chopped. They're green olives. Some chicken broth, chopped dates, and some lemon juice. And that's it. When you cook this, it'll probably be best cooked in a skillet um, until the chicken is no longer pink in the middle. It'll be about 25 minutes. When we got our chicken this time, there was actually a great sale on chicken breasts, but they were the warehouse packs. And so the way it all worked out, there were two chicken breasts left over and I know a wonderful recipe of ours that only needs two chicken breasts. So we are making just one bag of our chicken noodle soup. Christy and I will have to fight over it. <laughs> but we've got our two chicken breasts in the bag and then you're gonna do some carrots, onion, Normally you would do celery, but I am allergic, so we don't add celery. Um, some minced garlic, thyme, a bay leaf, chicken broth, and a cup of water, some parsley, salt, and pepper. On the day that you cook this, you're gonna add a pack of egg noodles. You can cook this either in the slow cooker or on your stove top. Now you can add the chicken broth and water now, or if you wanna save space in your freezer, you can add it on the day of cooking. This is a really great one, of course, to have for winter. Creamy slow cooker pork chops. We have in our bags four pork chops, um, and then we're going to add mushroom soup, cream of chicken soup, three quarters of a cup of beef broth, two cups of sliced mushrooms, half a diced onion, a little bit of salt and pepper, some paprika, and a couple of cloves of garlic. We're gonna mush them all around in the bag, seal them up tight, getting all the air out, and throwing them in the freezer. I had one bag of snapper fillets in my freezer, so we're only making one of these. This time around, we're really being conscious partially because of the cost of groceries and partially just because we want to make sure that we use things in a timely manner so that nothing goes to waste. We have been really making sure that we use absolutely everything in our freezers this time around. So sometimes that means only having one of a recipe like this one. This is normally chili lime tilapia, but this time it's chili lime snapper because snapper is what I had. So we've got our frozen fillets in the bag. You can use frozen or fresh cod, snapper, or tilapia. Then we're doing lime juice, olive oil, garlic, chili powder, a teaspoon of brown sugar, so just a, just a touch, some paprika, pepper, and seasoning salt. We're adding that all into our um, resealable bag and squishing it around to combine. On the day that you go to make this, you can either make a foil packet and bake it in the oven, or you can cook this one on the barbecue. It's not exactly barbecue season right now, so this will be one that we probably do in the oven this time. If I had a thousand tongues I would sing with everyone Voices like a mountain song Sing you are my only one Oh my, oh my, oh my days Life is wonderful Life is wonderful
Riley Stew is a fantastic winter soup. We're going to start out with our round steak that's been cubed. You could also use chuck roast and cube it if you want. We have one and a half to almost two pounds here. We're going to add four carrots peeled and sliced, a chopped onion, a green bell pepper diced, minced garlic, mushrooms, pearl barley, salt, pepper, thyme, basil, a bay leaf, and then you have a choice here. If you are short on freezer space, you do not have to add the beef broth right now because it's full a full four cups. Or if you do have some freezer space, you can add the beef broth in right now and freeze it flat and it will be just fine. But if you are short on space, you can leave that, we call it a tetra pack. I don't know what everybody else calls it but you can leave that Tetra Pak in your pantry and just add it in on the day of cooking. When you cook this, you wanna make sure that that beef gets a chance to break down because these are tougher cuts. So you wanna have it in your slow cooker for five to seven hours on low, or if you're doing it on the stovetop, you want to let it simmer for at least an hour to let that beef break down. You wanna seal the bag after getting all of the air out and enjoy. Hey, funny story, I forgot to put the mushrooms in. So, done is better than perfect. We're gonna open this baby back up and stick those mushrooms in there and seal it back up. I'm glad I remembered before it got frozen. We're doing a taco meat. Now, you might notice that uh, the meat in the bags looks a little bit different. That's because I've got veggie beef, the Mexican veggie beef, in my bags and regular ground beef in Christie's bags. I always put Christie's bags on the same side so that I remember every time which ones go in her cooler and don't mix them up. Funny enough, Christie, when she does mine, it she does them on the opposite side. Well, we each do ours on the same side, so it works out, but you know, anyway. Um, and so we're, we've got your beef or veggie beef, and then onions, we do minced onions in this, taco seasoning, tomato sauce, chili sauce, and here's the part where it differs from most taco meat recipes, and that is the cheddar cheese. And you actually put that right in there because then when you cook it up, it melts and it's like, creamy and just delicious. It just adds a little something. So you can find this full recipe in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. Oh, and you can use it, of course, for tacos or taco salad, tacos in a bag. We love those walking tacos. Or you can stir this into a pasta and top it with some more cheese and green onions. That's really delicious. And on your nachos or in your eggs. Huevos rancheros. Totally. Mm -hmm. This taco black bean and rice casserole is a new to us meal. I think it's going to be really delicious. We're doing three with real beef and two with Mexican veggie beef. So you're going to have your ground beef or fake beef in the bag and then add some taco seasoning. A can of black beans that's been drained and rinsed, a can of Rotel, a can of tomato sauce, one cup of salsa, two cups of cooked rice, which I had forgotten to prep, so I had to quickly whip that up now and I'm just trying to let it cool. Um, some sour cream and then you're gonna use two cups of cheddar cheese, but you're gonna put one cup of the cheddar cheese right into your bag and mix it in. And the other cup you're going to put in a medium-sized bag and you're going to staple that above the seal to your other bag. And on the day that you go to cook this, your beef is already cooked, your rice is already cooked, so it's just a very fast reheat. Um, and you can just do that in the oven, put it in a casserole dish, but you're going to top it with that extra bag of cheese. Bake it at 350 for just 25 to 30 minutes since it's just reheating. I think this is gonna be a really good one. We like all the flavors, so it should be awesome. Ground beef stroganoff is a real staple at both of our houses. 
There are times when we will use up the ones that we make during our mega meal session and I will still make it for my family because they will always eat it and I almost, almost always have the ingredients on hand. So this is a super good one. We start it with some ground beef, half a cup of onion, two cloves of garlic, some mushrooms, some Worcestershire sauce, cream of mushroom soup, sour cream, and a little bit of parsley, and a little bit of pepper. On the day of, you can just easily do this in the skillet, let it get nice and bubbly, and right before serving, you want to add in another half cup of sour cream. It gives it some zip and gives it extra creaminess. You want to serve it over egg noodles, and I promise this will be a favorite. These sheet pan sweet and sour meatballs are quickly rising in the ranks in our house as far as freezer meal favorites go. Some of my kids uh, ask for these and when I run out of them, which I recently did, they were disappointed that they couldn't have them. So we're making these again today. We are using frozen meatballs. We're just using uh, one of the giant bags from Costco, uh, green beans, pineapple slices that are canned and drained. For today, I had a pineapple ch one can of pineapple chunks in my um, pantry, and so I chose to only buy three cans of pineapple slices, and we're gonna use the pineapple chunks to use what we have. And you can always adapt freezer meals to use what you have and save some extra money that way. Then we're gonna use some sliced onion, brown sugar, flour, vinegar, and water, and soy sauce and ketchup. Now all of those, the brown sugar, flour, all of that, we're gonna mix together in a bowl and pour it into the bags. Then you're gonna take out the excess air. On the day that you go to serve this, you just dump your entire bag onto a tray and bake it on a cookie sheet in the oven and all you need to do is make rice or noodles or some kind of starch with this and your full meal is done. You can find this recipe in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. Y'all have been asking for us to make desserts for a while and we don't make a whole lot of desserts for the freezer, but there are a few. And so here and there, we're gonna start including them. And this one I have been making for years and years. It just could not be easier. It is Oreo ice cream pie. And when you make this, you always wanna make two at a time because you're gonna use half a container of Oreo ice cream and half a container of Cool Whip. So it just makes sense that you'd make two and use the whole container of both. So we are going to mix together our Cool Whip and Oreo ice cream in a bowl and we're going to spoon that into pre-made chocolate cookie crumb crust and we're going to sprinkle it with some either Oreo crumbs or um, chocolate baking crumbs on top. And seriously, that's it. You're gonna cover it, put it in your freezer, and just slice it on the day you go to serve it. Couldn't be easier, but um, you can also make this with mint chocolate chip ice cream, and that's pretty darn good too. So with that, all you do is, again, just the mint chocolate chip ice cream and Cool Whip, mix it together, put it in your chocolate pie crust, and there you go. So. Yep, Oreo pie, everyone. This best freezer chili has been a staple for many years because it has a secret ingredient. I'll tell you at the end. Start out with one and a half pounds of ground beef that's been browned. You'll notice here that of the four meals I have, two of them look a bit different. That's because Charla likes to use Mexican veggie beef for hers. And mine have just the regular ground beef. We add one onion, coarsely chopped, some garlic, kidney beans, uh, chili style beans with the liquid, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, chili powder, cumin, paprika, a dash of pepper, and then that good old secret ingredient is maple syrup. Just a tablespoon, it cuts the acidity in the tomatoes and it just gives it another layer of flavor. This is a fantastic one to do in the slow cooker 
but if you are in a crunch, you can do it on the stove. This Italian sausage pasta sauce, we're using some Italian sausage that we've cooked into like a meatball shape just by slicing the casing down and then shaping them into, well, basically slicing them through and that creates like a meatball. We baked those in the oven and then I've got a bag with mild and a bag with spicy. That way um, our family can have one and Christy's family can have one. So I'm just adding um, some salsa, onion, diced green pepper, minced garlic, and our little secret ingredient, or I guess it's not really a secret, but it's kind of the ingredient that really makes this one. And that is the capers. When we've got all that in the bag, we're gonna take out that excess air, of course, because we don't want that freezer burn. And then we're gonna freeze it. And on the day that you go to cook this, you just heat it up really quickly in a skillet. The meat's already cooked, so it cooks up really fast, and you serve it over your favorite pasta. Turns out I had enough to make one more of the Italian sausage pasta sauce, so here we go. For these tortellini soups, we're going to make three of them because they come in a three pack at Costco. The tortellini does anyway. So we're using a seven cheese tortellini and this recipe is vegetarian. We are going to be putting our, all I'm gonna do with the tortellini is I'm going to cut it apart so that um, we can put the tortellini in our freezer and just have them separate. And then we're gonna add the tortellini towards the end of cooking on the day that we go to make this. Alternatively, you can put the tortellini into a separate freezer bag and staple that freezer bag onto this freezer bag. Into our freezer bag, we're going to add a chopped onion, a chicken or vegetable broth, pasta sauce, a, a full jar of pasta sauce, three cloves of garlic, some Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, um, and some mixed frozen vegetables. Now you can use whatever kind of mixed vegetables that you like. Most of the varieties that are out there include broccoli and I'm allergic to broccoli. So I chose the only blend I could find other than kind of the very boring, bland, like corn, peas and carrots blend. Uh, I chose the only blend that I could find that didn't have broccoli in it but you can use whatever kinds of vegetables that you like. You're gonna add all of that into your bag. Now, if you want, you can also add two cups of water now, but I find that for me, it's better to just make a note on the bag to add those two cups of water on the day of cooking because then it takes up less space in my freezer. So we're gonna mix that all together and you know, take out the excess air. If you do put the tortellini in the extra bag, then you'll staple the bags above the seal. And then, uh, and if you don't, you can just toss that package of tortellini into your freezer and grab it out on the day you go to make this. You're going to thaw your bag and put the contents into your slow cooker. You're gonna cook it on low for four to six hours and then 15 minutes before serving, you're gonna stir in that tortellini and let that cook through. And this is a really hearty meal. If you want, you can top it with some extra red pepper flakes and some Parmesan cheese. But anyway, you slice it, this is delicious. Of course, if you're Christy, you're gonna wanna serve this with some biscuits or garlic bread or cheese bread or something to give yourself more carbs. <laughs> As we established in our soup recipe recently, Christy does not believe that soup constitutes a full meal. For the baked tortellini alfredo, we are making three because again, the tortellini comes in Costco in packs of three. We like this tricolor seven cheese tortellini. Now, you can add different mix-ins to this meal, so it's not necessarily always vegetarian. 
You can do cube chicken and spinach. You can do sun-dried tomatoes and cubed cooked chicken. Um, you can do bacon or bacon and sun-dried tomatoes. Those are some of the variations that we've tried in the past. This time we are gonna make a vegetarian version and so we are doing sliced mushrooms and frozen peas as our mix-in. So you're gonna add the tortellini in your freezer bag or you can make this one in a baking tray and freeze it that way. Then you're gonna add in two jars of Alfredo, half to one cup of your mix-in, depending on what you've chosen, some shredded mozzarella cheese, and you're gonna mix that all together and seal the bag. In a medium-sized bag, you're going to add some Parmesan cheese, seal that up, and then you're gonna staple that to your large bag above the seal. On the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna transfer it into a baking dish if it isn't already in a baking dish and top it with the Parmesan, cover it with some foil or with the casserole dish lid and cook it. You're gonna remove the foil for the last 10 minutes of baking time so that it can crisp up a little on the top and that Parmesan can melt really nicely. If you freeze this in an aluminum foil tray, you can actually cook it from frozen. You're just gonna increase the cook time if you do it from frozen. So you can find the recipe for this in the description below. Of assembly and we are at 70 meals so we're pretty happy with that it, we are ending earlier than we usually end it's like 4 20 or something yep about that and we're just getting things cleaned up and put back in the fridge and all of that and so we're ready for day two we're gonna show you the freezer because isn't that what we're really here for the big <laughs> reveal it's true <laughs> it's true it's true da -da -da. drum roll so that's freezer number one there we're just kind of starting the stacks um but we will show you freezer number two it's over here oh Come can with i us. excuse my messy house there is freezer number two so we've da, got da, da. that freezer oreo pie oh yes christy's got one at her house yep two of course and you've got some of the some of the things here. And then this is a stack that we're working on because we have a friend who's having surgery. And so you might notice that we're making some odd numbers this time, like three of some and five of some. And that's why, because some of them are being given away for this friend's family for this surgery. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a stack. And then there'll be another one down at Plus the very bottom there here. yesterday. Oh, we're so tomorrow. prepared. We are getting ready. It is, it is going well. And yeah, we've got, my kids are going to have to eat the sorbet, which they're not going to be sad about. We're going to have to eat that tonight so that we've got more space tomorrow. And then that um, corn is getting used tomorrow to make our creamed corn for oh, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. So we are... Oh. We feel good. This was good. Yeah. Yeah. My feet aren't too bad. My hips might be complaining tomorrow, but so far I'm doing okay. And your knees from the concert. I finally took an Advil. It's just okay. better for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. So join us again tomorrow, but it's not really going to be tomorrow in your time. It's all in the same video.
it's day two. It is um, going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day because do you know what we did? The best we've ever done? The prep. We did so much prep this time. Yeah, we really did. And it it has made it faster. Christy always equates it to the painting. I do. If you're painting a room, there are things you have to do. You have to clear out the room. You should clear out the room. You should and remove that's all like your clearing our freezers. Yes. Making room in oh, our freezers. Good analogy. <laughs> you gotta you gotta take off all your little plates, all your all your um, light switches, light switches, and your your um, plug-in plates. Some people even remove their baseboards. Then, if you okay, so I don't know if you know what this is, but when you're when you're painting really close to the trim or to the ceiling, it's called cutting in. If you're very good at it, you don't have to put up painter's tape. Did you know that? But I'm not good at it. Part of part of prep sometimes is putting up painter's tape in those tricky spots or around the entirety of all your windows or around your ceiling or around your door. Lots of people do that. That's part of your prep. Some people wash their walls. I used to and I don't anymore. I think paint has improved to the point where you don't that's a, that's a step you can skip unless they're hideous. But what you do have to do is you have to patch your holes. So yes. there's all these things that you have to do before you ever start to paint. And that is your prep. And it, it's a really good analogy because when you're doing the prep for freezer meals, like you get really tired when you're doing one of these huge sessions and you're like, oh, like this is so, and there's no payoff. Like you don't even get to see the results yet. But it's like with the room, when you start painting, you see the different color. And when you start assembling, yes, you see the fruits of your labor. You do, you do. And if you don't do your prep when you paint, if you haven't patched your little pinholes in your walls and your nail holes and the whatever, um, the paint job's gonna not look that great. Yeah. So yeah, I always, that's what I always think when I, when I think of prep, I'm and like, it, it's a big burden, but it's worth it. These freezer meal sessions together where, you know, life's been too hectic and chaotic and we haven't finished our prep. And that happens most of the time, to be honest with you. And that's okay. I mean, life is life. Mm -hmm. But then we're like putting together a meal and, oh, we need chopped red pepper. It's not chopped yet. And then we're taking right. it out. We're stopping what we're doing to go and chop the red pepper. We're not realizing too that we might need more red pepper for another recipe. And so it's just kind of, it just, it's like stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Whereas yesterday we could just like throw the things in the bag. Totally. I had to chop two times. I had to chop sun dried tomatoes because we couldn't find them chopped. Sometimes you can and we couldn't. And what was the other thing? Oh, dates. dates. I had to cut up some dates and that was it. The mushrooms are chopped. The carrots Everything. were chopped. Everything was chopped. And of course, we had my mom here helping, and she's gonna come later today too. Like my, my, it's just so amazing. But so that great. also helped with the stop, start, stop, start. And I know that not everyone is fortunate enough to have that kind of you know person in their life, but we did this time. And if you've got kids that are old enough to help, like bribe them. <laughs> Feel bribe, free. This is a great time them. to bribe your kids. It's, it's not necessarily <laughs> like you don't have to necessarily pay them money, but like maybe a later bedtime or maybe like a family game night or maybe like a stay up late popcorn and a movie night. Whatever it is that you think your child will respond to, have them because it also lets them feel included, like they were part of it. And then later when you're eating the meals, they know, like you can thank them again. Mm -hmm. and For all say, their help. not have gotten this done without them. And our kids help with the prep. They, they sometimes do. help with the assembly if they're not at school. Yeah. So. No, they are in it. And my son is at a point, my daughter's a very good eater, but my son has a picky eater. And the more he's helped, the more he's likely to mm -hmm. eat the food. Absolutely. <laughs> Which that is helpful. Is so true. He now eats onions. Woo! I was <laughs> going to say it yesterday when I was prepping the beef stroganoff. He will now eat mushrooms in the beef stroganoff. And that's like a gateway to mushroom eating in other foods. <laughs> beef stroganoff, the gateway. <laughs> and he knows they're in there. I, could, I can't feed him mushroom soup on its own, but he can have mushroom soup in things and it's okay so 
you know, he's baby getting steps. baby steps. He's getting there. It's sometimes it's a texture thing for him, and I am the same way. So I understand. So yeah. today on the agenda, we've Ooh. got our seafood. Um, all of the seafood except that one snapper meal. So we've got the salmon shrimp. and shrimp. Shrimp. We're doing a new shrimp recipe yeah, this time. I'm and excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a couple salmon things, and then we have some pork roasts because yes. Dr Pepper pulled pork is it's a hit. Red. It's a hit, and it's popular, and it's fast to put together. Yep. So we might get those out of the way pretty quickly here. I think so. Uh, then we are also doing the cooked chicken recipes and doing quesadillas to bring on our trip because Christy and I are going away to plan for next year's videos and plan for what we're doing in the club next year and mm -hmm. all the awesome things we're going to bring to you and so we are going away to we're do going that away like, like away no from children. our families <laughs> it just was us so so excited. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be great. And we're going to work, but we're also going to relax. Yes. They're, they're we were just talking be... about it. Like, how much alone time are you okay with? Like, we're, it's yeah. going to be okay if we, like, like don't talk for a while, isn't it? We're both introverts, so uh, it'll be like, uh, I'll go to my room, you go to your room, and... Yes. They're, they're... I'm an ambivert. There are times okay. I need to be alone. Yes. But I... That's I'm pretty true. extroverted. You're, yeah. I'm okay, I take that back. Christy's more extroverty. I am introverted. <laughs> but there are times, yeah, I need downtime. I need alone time. And the older I get, the more alone time I need. We are also probably going to be watching some of those cheesy Christmas movies. <laughs> Again, like no husbands, no kids. So we can, we do, can do that. Want. We can do that. And we are bringing. Oh, she has to finish watching Love is Blind. Because oh, I have yes. to talk to her about it. I haven't been able to talk to her about it. And we have a friend, Hey Josh Sahanta, who has two songs in that series. And he's we love him. amazing. And he's like a close personal friend of hers. He's a good yeah, guy. Yeah, we love Josh. So, oh, and Josh has a YouTube channel. So you can check out his and music there. And he's on there. Spotify. He sang at our daughter's wedding, which was one of the highlights of... Right, like it was a beautiful. huge, huge thing. He wrote the song so, for his wife for their wedding. Yeah, he, he is a great human being and extremely talented, but more like just a great human being. So we're there's, there's lots of things. Yeah, but we are going to um, yeah bring these quesadillas with us. So we have to make those today so that we can bring them. Yes, on the trip so that I can have my um, quesadilla and guacamole fix. Today, we are making you guys oh, a sauce from, from Juliana, who is in our Facebook group. She posted a photo of this chicken that she had made, which is basically a shake and bake chicken. And I did the shake and bake chicken yesterday already. Um, we're doing I'm gonna shake do and bake drumsticks today. Shake and bake drumsticks today. They're but, frozen, so we're gonna see how this goes. We are not, we're pioneering this, because we don't know. We don't. No idea. We don't know, but we'll see. Um, but we're making two bags, one for each of us, of Juliana's special sauce. So it makes orange go, chicken. Yeah. I didn't with, make labels for it. Oh, that's okay. We can just write on the bag with Sharpie, because. We can do that. Done is better than perfect. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so we have so much on the agenda today. Uh, it's going to be great. We should shut up so we can get cooking. Yes. And we can get watching. <laughs> okay. Dr. Pepper pulled pork is a fantastic meal if you want to feed a crowd. We're going to start out with our pork shoulder or butt. We like a five pound to maybe a seven pound cut. We're going to add onion, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce, two cans of Dr. Pepper, two tablespoons of brown sugar, some salt and some pepper, and that's it. On the day of cooking, you'll definitely want to do this one in your slow cooker. You can do four to five hours on high or seven to eight hours on low. You want to shred it and then serve it on buns. And when we make ours, we definitely add coleslaw right to the bun. It gives it that extra zip and a little bit of crunch. Lasagna soup. I love this one. So I made sure that I put it on the list. You can use ground beef for this or ground Italian sausage. I am using Italian sausage. I've got mild in Christie's bags and spicy in our family's bags. Then you add oregano, basil, minced garlic, red pepper flakes, salt, pepper, two bay leaves, some fennel seed, 
nutmeg. I'm gonna make a note about the fennel seed. Christy's not a fan of fennel, but she doesn't hate it in this recipe. So I consider that a win. I do put more fennel in our family's bags than in her bag. Again, that's how you can customize the meals to your taste and customize them even if you're making them for more than one family at a time. Then you're gonna add uh, a diced onion, two cans of fire roasted tomatoes, a can of tomato paste, and you can add chicken or beef broth now or on the day of serving. Because we're making so many meals today, I wanna to conserve space in the freezer, so I'm just gonna make a note on the label to add the chicken broth later. On the day that you go to cook this, you are going to thaw it and then you can cook it in, you could cook it in the slow cooker, but really we just do ours in a stovetop pot. At the end, when you've just got 20 minutes left, then you're gonna add five lasagna noodles that you break up. We have experimented. Not more and not less. <laughs> nope, it is exactly it is five. five. <laughs> it's five. Thou shalt not put six noodles <laughs> in. In our test kitchen, we determined that five is the answer. Four is too few, six is too many. <laughs> anyway, and then you're gonna, you know, let that cook through, so your 20 minutes. Once those are soft, you can serve it. Now, onto each bowl, this one's a little bit of a fancy one. Like if you had a dinner party or something, you could honestly serve this. Because on top of each bowl, you're gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese and some ricotta cheese. It is like restaurant quality food at home. We were just talking about this recipe because we do love it so much. Sometimes you wanna make the recipe and you don't happen to have ricotta on hand, but did you know that you can freeze ricotta? And I thought, you know, the next time I buy some, we don't necessarily use it all. It's something I might put in an ice cube tray and freeze and have them separately so that when I do make this, I can thaw them and I can put the little blob of ricotta on my bowl. And because it's being mixed in, I think it would be fine in a pinch to use it that way. And did you know most ice cube trays are two tablespoons full? Yes. So, so I mean, I know because you told me. Yeah, we've talked about this before too. And so that's a nice amount to put in, or once they're thawed, you could divide it between a couple of bowls, but that's just an option. Yeah. That's all. Because ricotta is one of those things that's expensive, so if you're gonna buy it, you wanna use the whole thing, yeah, you like do. every last drop. <laughs> Absolutely. We are making frittata as part of our Christmas morning breakfast. So we're gonna have this with that hash brown casserole and probably some bacon and fresh fruit. It's gonna be delicious and I'm hardly gonna to have to do anything. I'm just gonna throw this in the oven while we're doing stockings and when we're done stockings, breakfast will be ready. So we are sauteing some vegetables in butter on the stove top. I chose some red pepper and green zucchini because I wanted it to be Christmassy. I also added some onions and mushrooms. And when those are done, we're gonna put them in the bottom of our trays. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can actually reserve your some green peppers off to the side, saute those green peppers in strips, reserve them off to the side, and then at the very end, you can lay them on top in the shape of a Christmas tree and they will actually stay relatively put and you'll have a little Christmassy thing. I've also done wreaths with the red peppers. Um, just, you know, fan them into a circle on the top and then you have little flowery red peppery things. But today it's all about saving time. So we're just throwing the vegetables down at the bottom there and then we are mixing together some eggs, sour cream, grated Swiss cheese, heavy cream, salt, pepper, and fresh rosemary. Mix that all together, pour it on top, and then we are going to put a layer of plastic wrap 
directly on top of that egg mixture and then cover it with foil. Make sure to make a note to yourself to remove the plastic wrap before you bake it. You're just gonna thaw this and bake it for 50 minutes or an hour, just until the egg mixture is set and a great brunch or Christmas morning breakfast. The recipe for this is in the Freezer Meals 101 Club. Crock-Pot barbecue drumsticks. These are really great and I'll tell you why. Because we can cook them in the crock pot, but to get that sticky, um, crispy bits happening that you would normally get with barbecue, we're gonna put it in the broiler at the end so that we can just kind of finalize it and glaze it up. So we start out with three pounds of drumsticks. We're gonna do a little spice blend of paprika and cumin and salt. And then we're gonna put those in each of the bags and shake it up so it's nice and evenly coated. And then we're gonna add in our minced garlic and one cup of barbecue sauce. In a separate bag, we're going to put another three quarters cup of barbecue sauce and then we'll staple it on. And you're gonna use that to baste while you're doing your broiling after the slow cooking. So these are tender and they are sticky and crispy and all the wonderful things that barbecue should be. And we were able to get drumsticks oh, for so cheap. cases for $10. And so with three cases, we're making seven meals. So for $30 worth of chicken, we are looking at just over $4 per meal. So this turns out to be one of those like amazing budget meals because of the sale we were able to get on the drumsticks. And we like to choose things based on what's on sale. And we've got some videos, you can check them out on budget meals that can all be made for a full family for like less than $8 a meal or less than $10 a meal. Some of them are $4 a meal. And so this is like that because even if you add in the barbecue sauce and all the things, we're gonna be at like under $8 anyway for each of these meals. Awesome. This recipe is our first attempt at shake and bake drumsticks. We had done some shake and bake chicken earlier and we'll, that was boneless skinless chicken breasts. We'll see how that goes. In talking about how to get it to stick to the frozen drumsticks, without them sticking to each other, because the, the theory is you have to wet the chicken and then put the coating on with the shake and bake coating, we would really have to lay them out on a cookie sheet to have them freeze individually. Even though the drumsticks are already frozen, they'll stick together if we just dump them in a bag. So we're far enough along in our day that we don't actually have room in our freezer to do it. So in this case, we're just going to divide what we have left of our shake and bake seasoning into other large freezer bags, staple them to our drumsticks so that on the day of using them, we will thaw our drumsticks and do the water method then. We can wet the drumstick, put it in the shake and bake, shake it up, and then cook it that way. When you cook these, because it has the bone in, you cook them at 400, and you, they'll need to be in for probably 45 minutes, maybe up to an hour. You'll, you'll want to check and make sure they're at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit and that they're cooked through. Um, if you're doing these like the boneless skinless, you know, probably 25 minutes will be good, uh, maybe, maybe 30. So cross our fingers and uh, wish us luck and we'll see how this goes. So we have talked about our amazing Freezer Meals 101 group on Facebook and what makes it amazing are the people. We love our people in there and we've got someone named Juliana who is always a great source of, well, she's actually a great source of joy. She's got a great attitude, but she also has a wealth of information. So she recently put a picture of an orange sauce that she made for her chicken. And she kind of does like a shake and bake style chicken. And then when it's done cooking, she puts this orange sauce on top. She staples a small bag of the orange sauce 
to the bag with the shake and bakey chicken stuff and then she just thaws it and puts it on top. Since we made shake and bake chicken, but it's already in the freezer, we're not gonna staple this bag to it. But when we go to make our shake and bake chicken, we're gonna serve this sauce on top and I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you, Juliana, for this recipe. We are putting together equal portions of orange marmalade and barbecue sauce. So I'm going to do enough for two recipes, put them into two uh, medium-sized freezer bags, and then Christy and I can each have one. Garlic butter shrimp is one of the fastest meals to put together, so don't blink or you might miss this. I am really going to put in a gigantic scoop of, and it is a gigantic scoop and it's allowed because it's six to eight cloves of minced garlic. Okay, so I'm putting there. in a gigantic scoop of garlic in here, a quarter cup of flour, a tablespoon of olive oil, some Italian seasoning, a dash of red pepper flakes, and salt and pepper. I'm gonna seal this up and freeze it. And that's it. On the day of cooking, you wanna thaw it. Now, I had this recently at home and the, the shrimp had thawed enough that there was a lot of shrimp juice in the bag. It was, you know, a combination of water and just thawed shrimp. And so what I did was I actually opened up the top of the bag, squeezed it semi-tight, and turned it upside down and drained it. So that not all of the spices ran out, but most of the water did. So that way it wasn't like, when I fried it up, I wasn't steaming the shrimp. I was frying it properly. Now there's a lot of butter in here and this is fantastic. It's so good. So you can put this on pasta. You can put this on steak. You can have this by itself. You can stir it into other things. You could probably even put it on some nachos. No, <laughs> no, no. Wait, Charlotte's giving on, me the no. On some rice. Although, like, one of my daughters who does not like shrimp mm -hmm. loves this on pasta. She just avoids eating the shrimp. So, so does my she's son. Just having the garlic butter. Right. It's just garlic butter is what yeah. it is, and it is really delicious. It is a good addition to any sort of meal. I will say, if you are putting this on pasta, though, if you don't know this. Reserve a bit of the pasta water, it's starchy, and you can add some of it back in once you put the butter and shrimp into the pasta, and it just gives it more slip and better coverage in your pasta, so it just doesn't seem dry. It just makes it go a little further. Very good tip. You've told me that before, and I always forget, but I have done it, and it does make a big difference. And I used to even write it on our, um, I used to even write it on our labels, Yeah. but I couldn't fit it. Like it's a lot to put on the label. So it's just a habit that I've gotten into for just about any kind of pasta that I make. I always put just, you know, a measuring cup in there and I keep a cup of that starchy pasta water. And if I need to, I can add it back in. So that's your pasta tip for the day. The kitchen tips with Christy. This shrimp curry goes together very quickly. I'm going to do the sauce in one bag and the shrimp will be separate in another bag. I'm going to staple them together and um, we'll freeze them like that. So you start it with one pound of shrimp and then in the other bag where the sauce is going to be, you start out with a minced onion, three cloves of garlic, some ginger, garam masala, turmeric, a can of coconut milk, and some diced tomatoes. A little bit of salt and pepper and we seal it up. Make sure you take out as much air as you can and staple your bags together. Make sure you staple above the seal or you're gonna get a leaky mess. It will be sad and you want to heat this up until boiling and then throw your shrimp in when it's been thawed and then you can serve it over rice.
talking about earlier, I'm making quesadillas for Christy and I to take with us when we go away. The trick to making quesadillas when you're freezing them is to lay them flat first on a cookie sheet, get them in your freezer. Once they're frozen, you can transfer them to a freezer bag. I don't cook them first. I just freeze them raw and then on the day that you go to make them, you can make them in the oven or on a skillet. I like to serve mine with guacamole, but you could also serve them with salsa or sour cream. Thing about quesadillas is you can pretty much put anything in them. We've got a really great recipe in the club for a black bean and sweet potato quesadilla. Uh, you can put, these ones are gonna be buffalo chicken. So we prepped the buffalo chicken ahead. I cooked it in um, buffalo chicken, like in Frank's red hot sauce. And then I added some more later when I shredded it. We're gonna add jalapenos, red pepper, and onion because we've already got diced red pepper and onion chopped and that makes it super easy. We're gonna use a habanero blend cheese. You could also use um, instead a Tex-Mex cheese or just cheddar or mozzarella. The thing is, is that really the sky's the limit. You can use um, ground sausage in your quesadillas or um, the pulled pork that we're making today would taste amazing in these. Any kind of taco meat tastes really good in your quesadilla. So whatever kind of veggies you like, we prefer not to add tomatoes because we do find that with the freezing and thawing and then cooking, they can make the tortilla a little bit soggy. So sometimes I just add tomatoes right into my guacamole and Get my tomato fix that way. Um, we are using just plain flour tortillas for these and yeah I hope that when you make these you personalize them and make them however you want. Oh diced green chilies are really good in them. Really there's no way to go wrong with these. I had some buffalo chicken left over from our quesadillas and you know nothing needs to go to waste. So we are making buffalo chicken dip and Christy and I are gonna bring it on our getaway. And we're really excited. Buffalo chicken dip freezes beautifully. We've actually made a few this year so that they're in our freezer for Christmas. And I didn't wanna to touch those because I wanted to leave them for Christmas. But now we have a reason to take one with us. We are doing the rest of our cooked chicken. It's already got some Frank's Red Hot in there but I'll be adding a little bit more some cream cheese, uh, a bottle of ranch dressing, some grated cheddar cheese, and some water chestnuts. It's supposed to be celery, but I'm allergic, so water chestnuts give you that same crunch as celery, and they are delicious. So when you go to make this, you just heat it in your slow cooker or your oven and serve it with tortilla chips. Yum. So, we want to explain something to you because we we really want to be real and and, and we want to we want to teach you yes and this is this is how it goes sometimes so when I do if you've watched our prep video you saw how I transfer the recipes onto the shopping lists and all the things and make sure we have everything we need well one of the things that I put on Christie's shopping list was salmon depending. Like depending on the price. Right. Where I was shopping was the cheapest. So I went ahead and I got some. However, I, because salmon was sort of a maybe, I didn't add the ingredients other ingredients to make the stuff we normally make. And we have such good salmon recipes. We like do. we have such good salmon recipes. So here we are. We've got enough salmon to make five meals. And to clarify, we live out of town. Yeah. We don't drive to the store for one thing. So we are working with what we have. And this is just to show you that sometimes you have to improvise and and it's okay. You can invent things or you can look up recipes using like the ingredients like in the club you can type in the ingredients you have and it'll generate like what recipes there are. Yeah. So one of the recipes that we love is mm. this ginger soy salmon, but it requires orange juice. And we, we don't have a drop. 
No, we don't even have like frozen orange juice. No, but when Charlotte's mom came this morning, she brought a bag of mini oranges of the little teeny tiny mandarins. And so she's like, well, what if I squeeze those for you? So <laughs> it's, it is some orange looking orange juice, but she squeezed enough this for us. Fresh orange fresh juice. Fresh squeezed orange juice. So we're gonna use this in our salmon, in our ginger soy salmon today. And so we're gonna be able to show you that recipe. And then we're gonna be able to show you like one maybe of this lemon dilly salmon that we make that mm -hmm. we love. We love. We, we, we don't have enough mayonnaise to make. Between our two more. houses. No. It's okay. That's okay. We have other salmons. So we're gonna like invent stuff. We're gonna invent stuff. And when Christy went home, she grabbed some grain mustard mm -hmm. and some regular mustard. And she came back and she's like, have this salmon that I make and this is how I do it and I'm like this is how we we're can, gonna freeze we can freeze it. A fry, we can freezerize this. this this can happen so we're gonna show you a different one and we you also have it. a um, barbecue salmon recipe that had it calls for some green onions which we happen to have chopped and we do have extra mm -hmm. and so we're gonna throw some things together and instead of seeing like many of the same meal which is obviously faster to do you're gonna see we're like gonna break it down. singles, <laughs> and but that's okay. You'll see more variety, and then we're gonna like test kitchen some of them, and they might end up in the club if they're great. If they're great, okay. On that note, we have to tell you about a fail. Oh yeah, we do have to talk about the fail. It yeah. had potential. It, it just didn't work out. No. So one of the meals that you will see earlier in this video is a simple slow cooker pork chops. And we've been looking for a pork chop recipe. We've got only one pork chop recipe in the club. Yep. And we want more. Yeah, we do. So we made this slow cooker pork chop and we adapted it from a recipe that we found and we thought, and it, it you know, I mean, technically it freezes and everything, mm -hmm. but Christy tried one. So I did it, I didn't do it four hours on low. Instead I did it two hours on high Physically, the pork chop was perfectly cooked. I was really happy with that, but the sauce that ended up coming out of it was very watery and broken down looking and wasn't appealing. And she I sent her pictures. picture and it was like, and oh, it's like very like, like tan. Yeah, it was pretty bland looking. <laughs> and I'm going to say something though. There are people that have said, oh, your beef, ground beef stroganoff looks pretty gross, but I tried it and it's amazing and I'm gonna have it every time now. And that's why we love it. We know it's kind of ugly. It's okay, we yeah, get it. We have other ugly recipes too. We have other too. ugly things that taste delicious. And so I thought, okay, it looks ugly, but maybe we'll try it and it'll be okay. And so I cooked up some baby potatoes with it and we had some peas. Texture wise, it was okay. But just the flavor wasn't exciting enough to make it, it was kind of a flop. So we're including it in the video. You'll still see the recipe here because we did make it. We it made still it. counts as and in our total and everything. And you might look at this recipe and say, I know how to save that. And, and if, if you do, tell us. Please put it in the comments if you know how to save it because we still have two more bags and we have to eat these. We have to eat them. Recipes mm -hmm. like that do not make it into the club. <laughs> Yeah, just so you know. And that's how you know that when you find a recipe in there, it's Christy Charlotte approved. It is. And most especially Charlotte approved. If it doesn't <laughs> pass Christy's test, it is certainly not going to pass the no. Charlotte test. Um, <laughs> and this one didn't pass the Christy test. So no, you know that you should not make There this. wasn't anything really appealing about it. Other than I did a really good job of cooking them. I think in the description, I'm going to write beside that recipe, do not make. Yeah, because, that's fair. And we will continue on our hunt to bring you a good hey, meal pork chop recipe. Hey, send us your pork chop recipes. Yes, Obviously, we will use viewer submitted recipes. We, we're doing it today with the orange chicken. If you run into this problem where you're out of ingredients or whatever, that's okay. You can improvise and use what you have and your inventions might turn out to be better than the original because I know sometimes they have for us. They sure have. This ginger soy salmon has been a staple for us since the beginning. It is really a fantastic recipe. We start out with our salmon fillets. We've cut them up into nice portions instead of using the one full fillet. 
two thirds of a cup of orange juice. Today we're having extremely fresh squeezed orange juice. Some cornstarch. Normally we don't put the cornstarch right into our recipes, but in this one it does work out. And I think it's maybe because of the orange juice, to be honest. Uh, we're gonna add soy sauce, olive oil, some brown sugar, some lemon pepper seasoning, some garlic, uh, minced garlic, and some minced ginger, and we use our squeezy tube ginger, which we love. We're gonna mix all these things together right in a bowl and then pour it into the bag so that we can get that cornstarch nicely mixed. On the day of cooking, you can do this on the barbecue. It's a nice one. You wanna make it inside a, a foil packet and put it on your barbecue and do it that way, or you can do it in your oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes until it starts to flake easy, easily. This is a great one to even, lots of times Charlotte does this one when she has a house full and then she does all the appetizers, she'll set this one out and people will just take whatever salmon they want. It is sweet and got some kick to it and it is delicious. You will enjoy this meal. This one pot Cajun chicken pasta is a amazing like i i am really passionate about this one because we recently made it in we did a whole one pot video and i'll actually put a link for that above because they were all so good they worked out really really well and it's nice the one pot because then you don't have so many dishes but anyway this one was our favorite of the whole lot and it was so darn good and we talk about our happy accident with this one and that is because i was supposed to have fire roasted tomatoes for this but somehow i hadn't bought them or i used them or i still don't know it's like the magical disappearing act of the fire roasted tomatoes i'm still convinced that i bought them but we didn't have them, but I did have some cans of spicy red pepper tomatoes in my pantry. And so we substituted those and now that will forever be the recipe because they were so darn good. So this is our recipe for one pot Cajun chicken pasta. We've got our boneless skinless chicken breast diced, cooked and diced, some Cajun seasoning, red and yellow bell peppers sliced, uh, some red onion, garlic, a bit of chicken broth because of course you're gonna need liquid in there because you're gonna put your pasta in this raw and you need it to cook up in something. So you've gotta have some liquid and then your cans of spicy red pepper tomatoes, some heavy cream, some cream cheese, and some parsley. When you hear like cream cheese and heavy cream, you know this is gonna be a good one, right? So on the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna thaw it, and then you're gonna put it in a big skillet or pot, and once it comes to a boil, you're going to add your penne and it cooks up right in the pot. And if you want to, you could top this with some Parmesan, but honestly, it's just good how it is. So I might add a little bit of salt and pepper to this one because the chicken broth that I'm using is no salt. That's it. This is a new invention. It is chicken enchilada pasta. And we were going to cook the pasta and include it and have this just be like an easy bake one, but it's day two and we're tired. <laughs> so we're not cooking the pasta. I made an executive decision that on the day that we go to make this, we can just boil up some water and throw some pasta in there and then just, you know, put this sauce, stir the sauce in and bake it and easy enough. So we've got our cooked cubed chicken in the bags. You could also use shredded if you prefer. Um, my husband in general doesn't like the shredded chicken. There's texture issues for him and I get texture issues. So 
I'm okay with accommodating for that. Then you're gonna do a diced onion, two cloves of minced garlic, and some green onions. And then you're gonna mix together some enchilada sauce and sour cream in a bowl and pour that over top. We're gonna put some grated jalapeno jack cheese in a medium-sized bag and staple that onto our large bag so that on the day of serving, once we stir this sauce into our cooked pasta, put it in a baking dish, we can top it with the cheese and then while it's in the oven, that cheese will melt, it will be amazing. If you want, before you go to serve it, you can add some more sliced green onions just for a bit of freshness. I am really looking forward to trying this one. Dill salmon. This is another regular contender in our freezer meals. This one is starts out with one and a half pounds of salmon. We add sour cream and mayonnaise, and believe it or not, the mayonnaise freezes beautifully. It doesn't separate when it comes out and when it thaws, and sometimes that's a concern, but in this case, it just seems to be so nice. We add two tablespoons of dill. In this case, I'm using lemon dilly dip mix because it has a little extra zip with it, but you can just use regular dill and that's nice too, and you can use fresh dill if you are so inclined. We'll also add some garlic and a little bit of lemon juice. When you go to cook this, you want to just let it thaw and you can just do it in the oven. Uh, you can do it at 350 for 25 minutes or until your salmon flakes easily. Sometimes I do mine at 400 for 20 minutes. I think just as long as it's cooked properly, you're good to go. I'm in the middle of making the dill salmon recipe. We made one for the camera and then I'm making one off camera. And so I'm at the tail end of my mayonnaise. And I said to, to Charlotte and her mom, you know, the, the way to get it out of here, there's enough in there, but it's the squeezy tube kind. And so the best way to get it out of here is to put some liquid in it and then squeeze it out. It doesn't always work because maybe you don't have enough and I'm gonna have to like fiddle with the, the proportions a little bit, but I'm gonna just pour the lemon juice right in there put the lid on, shake it up, and then squeeze it into my container and see what I'm dealing with. Because I need the lemon juice anyway. I need the lemon juice anyway. And I've done this before with barbecue sauce. Sometimes you wanna get it out. There's vinegar in barbecue sauce, so I used a little bit of apple cider vinegar and put a couple of tablespoons in there and shook it up and it just gave extra zip to the vinegar and I got the rest out of the bottle. If you're cheap like me, it's good to go ahead and get as much as you can out of your bottle and it's not wasteful and it will still work out for your recipe. Chicken in a mango cream sauce is, mm. isn't it good? It's so good. This is a recipe that I adapted from one of the Sandy Richard Cooking for the Rest re uh, recipe books. And we've been doing it as a freezer meal for just years and years now. So we're gonna add three chicken breasts that are boneless, skinless, cooked and cubed into each bag. Then some sliced purple onion, sliced green pepper, garlic, madras curry paste, and flour. And then we're gonna seal the bags and shake them up so that that curry paste and flour coat all of the things that are in there. And we're gonna open our bags back up and add some chicken broth. Normally we add mango tangerine juice, but I could not for the life of me find mango tangerine this time. So we're just using mango juice. I'm sure it will be fine and then some evaporated milk, mango chutney, and red chili flakes. Then we will seal those bags up again, being sure to get rid of all the air. And on the day that you go to serve this, because your chicken is cooked already, you're just reheating your sauce in a skillet. You could even reheat it in the microwave if you wanted, and then you're gonna serve it over a long noodle like a spaghetti. And if you want, you can put more chili flakes and some grated 
Parmesan or Asiago cheese on top. You can find this recipe in the description below. This is truly one of my favorites. This barbecue salmon is a really great one to actually cook on the barbecue on a cedar plank. And if you are that kind of person, I've never actually done it myself, but I've had it when it's cooked on a cedar plank and whoo boy, is that good barbecue salmon. Alternatively, you can do this one, the, uh, this one in the oven, 400 degrees for 20 minutes or so. It's still gonna have the barbecue flavor because we are putting barbecue sauce on it. We start out with our salmon fillets. We're going to add half a cup of barbecue sauce. It can be any kind. It can be your favorite kind. Today we are using bullseye sweet and sticky. We'll add in some brown sugar, a green onion that's been sliced, and some salt and pepper. We are going to mix it all up in the bag, take all the air out, seal it, and lay it flat to freeze. Make sure you thaw this before you go to cook it, and um, give it a try. Give that cedar plank a try and let us know how it goes. This Thanksgiving, we did all of our side dishes ahead, and it made the day so much more enjoyable. I was actually able to hold my grandbaby more and just enjoy visiting with my family because all I was doing was putting everything in the oven or the crock pot or whatever. And the winner for the best recipe was the cream corn. This was clearly the winner in my house and Christie's. This is a recipe that Christy came up with for homemade cream corn. And I was a little skeptical. I was like, well, you can just open a can of cream corn. And if you wanna get fancy, you can mix that with a can of kernel corn, get a little more crunch in there. But no, nope, she was absolutely right. It is worth it to make your homemade cream corn. So she and I are making this for our Christmas dinners. This is gonna be one of our side dishes. We're using frozen kernel corn, some cooked bacon crumbled, heavy cream, sugar, salt, pepper, and butter. We are putting that all in our large freezer bag and then in a medium bag, we're gonna put some grated Parmesan. We're gonna take the air out of both bags staple those together above the seal, freeze them, and then on the day that you cook this, you're gonna dump the large bag contents into a casserole dish in a separate bowl. You're gonna mix together half a cup milk and three tablespoons flour, and you're gonna add that so that you thicken this up. Stir that in and then bake at 400 for 25 minutes. Top it with the Parmesan and bake for another 10 minutes. I am so looking forward to having this again, and so is my family. Mustard crusted salmon. This is a new to us freezer meal, although I've made it at home fresh many times, but we just kind of converted it and we talked a bit about the salmon here a minute ago. So this is how you make it. You start out with three tablespoons of grainy Dijon mustard, equal amount of olive oil. So again, three tablespoons. We're going to, in a separate bag, put our breadcrumbs, some parsley, and then add a teaspoon of olive oil and mix it around with the breadcrumbs so that on the day that you go to cook it, it will crisp right up on top of the salmon. We're gonna add a bit of salt and pepper, and then we're gonna squeeze all the air out of both bags and staple them together. Make sure you staple above the seal or you'll have some leaky stuff happening. And then on the day of cooking, you wanna thaw it and have a foil lined baking tray like a cookie sheet and lay your salmon out on it. And it's gonna have the, the just Dijon mustard all over it. But then you're going to sprinkle the breadcrumbs and you can even kind of pat it down a little bit and put it on top of the salmon. So when it bakes, the breadcrumbs crust up a bit and the salmon crisps on the bottom and the olive oil even will help um, it won't stick to the tray and it'll help keep it crispy on the bottom as well. And this is really great and we really hope it works out as a freezer meal. We'll let you know. Yay! For the honey garlic meatballs, we normally you would do 
three to four cups of store-bought or homemade meatballs. We're using store-bought frozen meatballs today. But what I wanted to do is portion them into smaller portions. So I've got uh, a couple of cups in one large freezer bag, and then I've got about one cup of the meatballs in a medium-sized freezer bag. This is a great example of a recipe that you can adapt if you're living on your own so that you can just make a single portion of it. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to mix the sauce together in a separate bowl so that we can pour the sauce into both of the bags. And we're only making one recipe of the sauce, if that makes sense. So we're doing some olive oil, soy sauce, two thirds of a cup of honey, and we've melted that so that um, it just mixes better. Some, quite a lot of garlic, because I mean, they are honey garlic meatballs and a little bit of water. Uh, you're gonna mix that together in your bowl and then we're gonna divide it between our two bags, take out the excess air and seal it. Uh, this goes really well over rice and you can, if you want to, make it all fancy, you can sprinkle it with a little bit of sliced green onions on the day you serve it. And probably like a side vegetable, thinking something green like beans. broccoli, beans, or peas. Mm -hmm. This seafood curry pasta is the best. It's the best, it's the best, and I'll say it again, it's the best. Um, it's got scallops and shrimp in it, but also a number of wonderfully weird ingredients that just make a really great flavor profile. We start out with some onion and mushrooms and sun-dried tomatoes that have been chopped and drained, curry powder, pineapple juice, little weird, but it's good, cream of mushroom soup and evaporated milk. So we're gonna mix all of the saucy ingredients in the big bag, and then we're going to staple the shrimp and the scallops to the outside, in, they're in medium bags. But you'll notice in two of these that are gonna be for Charlotte's family, the scallops, there's only two of them in there and they're mixed in with the shrimp, and it's because Charlotte is the only one in her family that likes the scallops. So I always make sure I just stick a couple in there for her and our family gets to have the rest, which is very generous of her because she could have them all to herself. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> and we're going to take one of these with us on our little trip. So I made sure that there was lots of scallops in that one so that she could have her share. to that point in the day where we are inventing things with the prepped ingredients we have left. So on the one hand, it's a great part of the day because we've done everything we had planned and we're nearing the end. On the other hand, we're getting a little tired and so it's that part where you kind of got to dig deep and push through, but you're kind of thinking, this is another meal. This is another meal. This means two or three more days that I don't have to cook. So that's what you gotta do when you hit that point. So we had some ground beef left, enough for two meals and enough Mexican veggie beef for one meal. And back when we first got married, we lived on Vancouver Island and I had this little tiny cookbook and there was a recipe in there called Garden Taco Rice. And it was a skillet meal. And it's one of the earliest things that I ever learned to cook. And since we've got the ground beef left, we've got some cooked rice left, we've got zucchini left, and I have some cans of corn in my pantry. This is immediately what I thought of. So this is my freezer meal version of garden taco rice. We are going to do some uh, onions, zucchini, corn, taco seasoning, chili powder, garlic, rice, and 
tomato paste and maybe if I'm feeling like it needs some more liquid, I might also put in some pasta sauce or tomato sauce, probably tomato sauce because it's this is more like along those taco lines. And when you go to cook this in your skillet, everything is already cooked in it, like your rice and your beef. So you can just heat it up and then top it with cheese towards the end if you want. And should be delicious. We have one more bag of frozen drumsticks left. I'm going to make a sort of drumstick cacciatore. We kind of took some inventory of what we have left. We have onions and mushrooms and a little bit of chopped zucchini and some tomato-y type things with Italian seasoning, and Bob's your uncle. There's some chicken cacciatore. I think this could be done in the slow cooker, but I would be more likely to do it in a casserole dish in the oven to have a nicer cook for me personally on the drumsticks. But we will see what we come up with here. I said all of those ingredients. There might be other things that show up in there because we are flying by the seat of our pants at the end of the day. With the end of the cooked rice, obviously my rice math was very off this time because I ended up with so much extra cooked rice. But anyway, with the end of that cooked rice, I'm gonna make kind of like a chicken fried rice, except no chicken. So it's gonna be more like a side dish fried rice. But I'm generally using my Tan Chiselle's, um chicken fried rice recipe except that I'm going to be adding mushrooms because we also have mushrooms left. So we've got our garlic, some oyster sauce, soy sauce, carrots, sliced water chestnuts, and peas, frozen peas. I think it's gonna be a pretty great side dish and we can just reheat it in the skillet. So this is the last one, everybody. This is it, we're done. <sighs> end of day two <laughs> end of day two that was a marathon that was a marathon absolutely but how many do we have 128 yeah <laughs> that's pretty good that's and really good we did extra filming behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't know about but we had our prep done we had a helper today and gosh it's not even it's not even five o'clock no we finished both days before five before it's been amazing. It's been, this is one of our best sessions yet. Yes. Even we were talking about, your mom was talking about, you know, you guys seem so calm. It's so peaceful in here. Yeah, Usually we're calm. a little bit frantic, but, <laughs> and then the, even the kids started coming home and it wasn't super no. disruptive today. It was, it was good. So we're going to show you the freezers. Um, and we had so much fun with you guys today. We did um, our main courses like we usually do, mm -hmm. but we also did an appetizer impromptu um side dishes mm -hmm. and, and a dessert from yesterday and breakfast and breakfast Two breakfast things oh, so yeah. and we've got we're kind of a little bit more set for christmas and we're set for our girls getaway yes we are because we now we have buffalo chicken dip yay and quesadillas and we're taking one of the seafood curries with us mm -hmm. and we're taking one of the cajun, cajun chicken, chicken one pot pasta <laughs> oh yes ma'am it's gonna be good we're taking the best with us so okay let me show you okay christy's gonna do the reveal what what oh. whose freezer is this that's awesome isn't that amazing look at look at how pretty it is look how beautiful it is Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's check out the other freezer we've got our pulp dr pepper pulled pork up there and these are quiches from last week, but that's the Oreo pie. And then we've got our buffalo chicken dip, um, some of our others, and then our frittatas on the bottom there. So we have, we have to spare. A we can have like another day's worth. I'm joking. <laughs> cap it at two. That's a kitchen tip from Christy. You can cap, cap it at two. <laughs> so yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. We we don't want you to get started if you haven't done freezer meals before with a mega session. We don't start there. <laughs> want you to Although, start. I started there. Yeah, I did too. But we don't want you to start there because it is overwhelming. We would like you to start with this 
great meal plan we have for you. Mm -hmm. It is free. It's a free meal plan and you can come and cook along with us. So it's got five meals of it. You're going to make two of each. So you're going to come home with 10 meals and you can cook along with us. And we have all the prep lists for you, your shopping lists for you. It's wonderful. So we're going to put a link down below, but we're also going to put a link over there. Or is it over there? I don't know anymore, but because we're doing the oh, selfie it'll version. Oh, show backwards, yeah. Anyway, but to our no fuss sheet pan freezer meals. You're going to end up with 10 sheet pan freezer meals. You can cook right along with us. There's a video. And like, like we said, it's a free shopping list, prep list, recipes, and printable labels. Dip your toe into it. And then like within a year, your freezer could look like ours. Get your freezer stacked so you can relax. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We so appreciate having you here with us. Uh, it makes it more fun for us and we love hearing from you. So say hello in the comments and ask any questions you've got. And of course, join the club. Join the club. We'll see you there. <laughs> Happy cooking. Bye.